Good evening, good evening, good evening. Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to our midweek gospel explosion pastoral teachings. And we thank you for sharing your time with us on today. We do honor God who is sovereign and supreme to his son, Jesus Christ, who is saving Lord and to the Holy Ghost, who is our leader, teacher, comforter, and our guide. He who leads us in the way of all truth and righteousness. We greet you with Jesus' joy and certainly in divine love. Well, tonight we'd like to call your attention to the gospel according to St. Luke chapter 15. And we'll begin reading at verse 17. Luke chapter 15, verse 17. Again, we thank God for you sharing your time with us on today. If you're there, or when you get there, you will find these words recorded. <clears throat> and when he came to himself, he said, how many hired servants of my father's house or my fathers have bread enough to spare and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee and am no worthy, uh, am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes or sandals on his feet. And bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. Verse 24, for this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found and they began to be merry. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you now for this preaching and teaching moment. We pray now, God, that you would help me to decrease and let your holy and divine spirit increase. And let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, for you are my strength and my redeemer. Anoint each of us the more that we might hear, that we might believe, receive, explore, apply, and share this word. In advance, we give you all of the honor, all of the glory, and all of the praise. For it's in Jesus' precious name that we pray. And every heart said, Amen. Well, tonight, we want to speak from uh, these words. Accepting your father's love. Accepting your father's love. We have just celebrated Father's Day a few days ago. And on Sunday, I talked about <clears throat> the characteristics of a good father. And, and we were talking about not only our father in heaven, but we also were talking about our earthly fathers, those who are good, or those who are patterning themselves after doing good. Uh, they have certain characteristics. So I kind of want to extend that uh, on today by talking about accepting your father's love. We're talking about our heavenly father. Because I believe the world is in uh, the precarious predicament it is in because many of us, even in Christendom, don't really understand uh, our Father's love for us. Our Heavenly Father loves for us. The one who created us, saved us, and sanctified us. We don't really grasp the fact or we don't get it of uh, His love for those of us who profess and proclaim to believe in him through what he has done through uh, what he has done through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So I believe if we're going to be efficient and effective 
uh, in carrying out the mandate that God has given us, then we must accept his love for us. And that love need to be displayed in our lives as we live and as we journey uh, from earth uh, to heaven. So uh, this is a very familiar passage of scripture, a very familiar parable to most of us. Um, Jesus the Christ, our Lord and Savior, he shared this parable. And I think it is one of the greatest parables or stories in the Bible. It is a parable that Jesus the Christ used to unveil to us the true heart of our loving heavenly father. Are you with me? Many theologians call <clears throat> this parable the parable of the prodigal son. And many of us, we have heard that. We have heard uh, this passage of scripture uh, being taught or being preached, uh, emphasizing the prodigal son. And many, many theologians, many historians call this parable the parable of the prodigal son. But the hero, the real hero of this story is about the father, not about the son. I say that again. This story, this parable, isn't the son is not the hero, excuse me, it's not the son, but the hero is the father. The father and his love for his, not only one son, but both of his sons. Are you hearing me? I know most of us have heard this story of this parable many times. But I want us to see, my brothers and my sisters, how this parable exposes the wrong faith that many believers today still have toward their heavenly father. So now, listen carefully. Consider this for a moment. What is your opinion of God? Especially when you have made a mistake. Think about it. Did you see God as a distant and unfeeling judge who is angry whenever you fail? Think about it. Or do you know him as your daddy or as your father whom you can run to any time, even when you fall short? Just a bunch of questions I'm asking for you to, to think about this now. My brothers and my sisters, many believers, many those who are part of the body of Christ, many in Christendom have come to place, come to a place where they have forgotten their heavenly father. They've forgotten his love, his grace, and his kindness. Are you with me? So what happens when that happens? Well, they relate to God in a, what I call a judicial fashion only. Mm -hmm. They perceive God exclusively as a God of holiness, judgment, and justice. A God who is easily displeased quick to anger, always disappointed with them and waiting impatiently to be appeased. Most people, a lot of people 
uh, who are Christian, call themselves Christians, who are part of the body of Christ. That's how they look at God, our heavenly father. My brothers and my sisters, I want to suggest to us tonight that this is wrong belief of who God really is. He is not just a judge who wants to just judge us. And he's not uh, uh, one who is quick to anger. He's slow to anger. He's not one who's always disappointed with us because we come short. No, that's not the God who created us and saved us and who keeps us. This is what I call wrong belief of who God really is. And because people think that way, they, their thinking have driven them into fear, being afraid, guilt, depression, and insecurity. That is why it is so important that we as children of God see the heart of God our Father as unveiled by Jesus the Christ in this parable. St. Luke chapter 15, verse 17 through, 20, through 24. Now, <clears throat> listen carefully. I'm going to begin to ask some questions. And I don't want you, I want you to think about it and perhaps somewhere along the way, answer those questions to yourself. Here it is. Here are the, some of the questions. Do you feel as though you are never good enough? Can never do enough? And be obedient enough for God to love and accept you? Think with me. Do you feel like you are always living under continuing condemnation? Perhaps you can't relate to God as a loving father because you are never, you, you've never experienced the love of your earthly father or because your own father has hurt you terribly. I don't know what the answer to those questions for you are. But my brothers and my sisters, I hope and pray as we continue this message on tonight, are we, as we continue to study God's word, not only tonight, but as we continue to study God's word, that you will supernaturally experience the intimate love of your heavenly father in a deep and personal way. And you won't be thinking about him as someone who just want to judge you and is disappointed in you and all of that, all of those negative things about God, our father. So now, in accepting your father's love, first of all, I believe in accepting your father's love, you must understand the father's perfect love. You must grasp you must, you must, you must, you must, you must see it. You must perceive it. Perceive the Father's perfect love. Complete love. Listen. I believe that there is a place or there is an empty place or empty space in our hearts that can only be filled by our heavenly father's love. 
Are you with me? So then, because of that, we must stop trying to find love and approval in the wrong places. There are so many Christians trying to find love, trying to fill that void. And they're trying to find love in the wrong places. And that void, the only one that can fill that void or that space in your heart is our Heavenly Father. Are you hearing me? So stop trying to find love in the wrong places. Stop trying to find approval in the wrong places and get and get entangled with all kinds of fears and insecurities because that's what's going to happen when you try to find love or try to fill that void in your heart in the wrong places. You find yourself entangled with all kinds of fears and insecurities. Are you hearing me? Listen carefully. If, if you would let God into your hearts today and let him fill you up with his perfect love, you will find the joy, peace, and confidence that you have been looking for in your life. Did you get that? Well, I said that again. If you would let God, our Heavenly Father, if you would let Him into your hearts today, right now, and let him fill you up with his perfect love, you will find the joy, peace, and confidence that you have been looking for in your life. Now, I want you to turn with me to 1 John chapter 4 and verse 18 and verse 19. First John chapter 4, verse 18 and 19. Listen to what John says in, uh, in this chapter. He says, verse 18, there is no fear in love. That means there's no being afraid in love. But perfect love casts out fear because fear has torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Verse 19. We love him because he loved us. Did you see that? You see, my brothers and my sisters, under the new covenant of God's amazing grace, God, our Father in heaven, isn't looking to judge you for your failings. Why is that? Why am I saying that? Here it is. Because he has already judged you, or judged your every failings, your mistakes, and your sins in the body of his own son, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ paid our sin debt in full. Are you with me so far? You see, the name that Jesus came to reveal in the New Covenant or in the New Testament, the name that Jesus the Christ came to reveal in the New Covenant of grace is Father. Father God. Today, my brothers and my sisters, God wants to reach out to you as a caring and loving father. Mm -hmm. 
Do you know his heart of love toward you? I believe that there are many who profess to be saved and sanctified and going to heaven anyhow don't understand or don't know or don't believe how much God really loves the believer. So again, do you know his heart of love toward you? Do you know that it was his idea to send Jesus the Christ to die on the cross of Calvary for you? Think about it. Now, let's turn to what I call the greatest verse in the Bible. And you know it by heart, and most of us do, but I want you to see it in your Bible. And that is St. John chapter 3, verses 16. And 17. Listen what it says. I know you know it, but we're going to read it because I want it, I want it to stick. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, many people can quote that. And they say that, but they don't say 17. So I want you to see 17, the next verse. And listen what it says. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn. He did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So now, again, let me ask this question again. Do you know that it was God's idea to send Jesus the Christ to die on the cross for you. That's what it says in John chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. So that means, my brothers and my sisters, that we should know, you should know, your father loves you and sent his son to save you. It was not just something God just did. He did it because he loved you. And that's why John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he sent his son. Here's another question. I'm asking a lot of questions tonight because I want you to think. Do you know that God loves Jesus the Christ dearly? Mm -hmm. Yes, he does. And Jesus the Christ is God's darling son. Jesus the Christ is the apple of God's eye. Now, watch this. If your father in heaven didn't withhold his precious son, Jesus the Christ, and sacrifice him for you, how much do you think he loves you? Think about it. We have to make sure that we accept God's love for us. We have to make sure that we accept our Father's love. My brothers and my sisters, I hope you're beginning to see, and not only see, but experience just how loved you are by the Father. And not only that, but and how precious you are to him. He loves you and you are precious to him. So then, because of that, don't be afraid of him. Seek the heart of your heavenly father 
seek the heart of your heavenly father's love. Unveil, see how his love has been unveiled through Calvary's cross to you. His perfect love. So, if we're going to accept our Father's love, our Heavenly Father's love, then my first point was we must understand the Father's perfect love. His love for us is complete. You don't need to add anything to that. Secondly, if you're going to accept your father's love, your heavenly father's love, then you must remember with God, your past doesn't matter. Doesn't matter to the extent that he will not forgive you. Your past does not matter. Notice now at the beginning of this parable, Luke chapter 15, verse 17, uh, just before verse 17. In this parable, around verse 12, that the prodigal son, the young son, came to his father and demanded his share of his inheritance. Mm -hmm. In verse 12. Let's look at that. And we'll read it. Verse 12. Chapter 15. Gospel according to St. Luke. And the younger of them said unto his father. Father give me the portion of good that falleth to me. He asked or actually demanded. His share of his inheritance. Now, hear me well. In the Jewish culture, this was equivalent to the young son literally telling his father to drop dead. We know that the inheritance, would, uh, the, the, the child would inherit, the, uh, would gain the inheritance after, after the death of the father. But the young son, the prodigal son, wanted his while he was living. So, he was effectively saying, the young son, the prodigal son, he was effectively saying, give me my share of the inheritance right now. It literally was a slap on the face of his father to ask for his inheritance while his father was still living. But we know according to the, the parable that his father gave him his, his portion. He divided it and gave his the younger son his portion and guess what the young son did? Well, first of all, let me say this. He completely dishonored his father by making such a rude request in the first place. Mm -hmm. Listen, if we don't grasp the extent to which this young man utterly rejected his father and chose his own way, we cannot appreciate the extent of his father's love and grace in receiving him back home as his son. Did you get that? Well, let me say that again because I want you to get it. If we don't grasp or get the extent to which this young man, the prodigal son, utterly rejected his father and chose his own way, if we don't grasp that, or grasp the extent of that, we cannot appreciate the extent of his father's love and grace in receiving him back home as his son. I hope I didn't lose you there. 
In the same way, if we don't realize how much we have rejected the Father or our Heavenly Father's love for us through our sins, we cannot appreciate and respond to the grace he extends toward us in forgiving us totally. Did you get that? I say it again. I'm repeating myself a lot tonight because I want us to get it. If we don't realize as his children and he's our heavenly father, if we don't realize how much we have rejected the father through our sins, we cannot appreciate and respond to the grace he extends toward us in forgiving us totally. Are forgiven all of our sins. Listen. Let's go back to the text. Luke chapter 15. Verse 17 through 24. We're not going to get through all of it tonight. That's for sure. But listen carefully. Upon the younger son. Upon the prodigal son's demand, as I said earlier, the father divided his inheritance to his sons. What was due to them? Now, it may someone may call that was a good father. Some may say he wasn't so good, but. The thing is, is that he was good enough to give him what he asked for. And sometimes our Heavenly Father will give us what we ask for, knowing that we don't need it, but he give it to us to show us that we didn't really need what we asked for. Because you know, that after the father gave his portion to his younger son, the younger son wasted his inheritance. After the demand, the son went into degradation and destitute. Let's see. Let's see it in the text. Let's look at verse 13 through 15 uh, in our text. Uh, through 16. Listen what it says. We're in chapter 15 of St. Luke. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey to a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all in verse 13 you see the degradation. In verse 14 you see the destitute. And when he has Spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want. Verse 15 says that he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. Verse 16. And he would fain, or he would gladly desire, to fill his belly with the husks that the swine did eat. Mm -hmm. And no man gave unto him. You see that? Hmm. The younger son wasted his inheritance. So, simply because he had accepted his Father's love. And when we have not accepted our Heavenly Father's love, we will become empty. We'll waste time. We'll waste talent. We'll waste talents. We'll waste treasury. We'll waste our entire temple when we do not 
or have not accepted our Father's love. Are you hearing me? So, we've said so far in, in accepting our Heavenly Father's love, we must understand the Father's perfect love. Secondly, we must understand that your past doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. God is able to forgive you of your past. My third and final point tonight is if you're going to accept your father's love, you must remember that God loves you in spite of your wrong motives. Let's look at the next verse of our text, verse 17, and we'll read the verse 19. And when he came to himself, he said, how many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough to spare and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. And I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. See that? Now, listen carefully. Because I'm going to ask another question right here. Was it the son, the son's love for his father that made him go home? Do you think? For a moment, he was truly repentant? Or even cared that he had broken his father's heart by demanding his inheritance and leaving home? I don't think so. I don't think that it was the love of the son for his father that made him go back home. I don't think that he truly repented. That, that's me. That's what I'm saying. I don't think that he cared that he had broken his father's heart. Well, I hear what you're saying. Well, Pastor, what do you think? Good question. Glad you asked. I think that he was clearly motivated by his stomach, not his heart. Wow. He was in destitution. He was destitute. He didn't have any food. And he was hungry, so he desired to eat the swine's food. That's when he began to think about what was going on in his life. He wanted to go home because of verse 16 and 17. Listen what it says. And when he came to himself, he said, listen what he said. How many hired servants of my fathers have what? Have bread enough to spare and I'm perishing with hunger. Verse 18. I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. You see that? He wanted to go home not because he had broken his father's heart. He wanted to go home. Not because he really had a repentant attitude. He wanted to go home because he was hungry. And didn't have anything. When he, when he had a lot, when he had his inheritance, when he had a lot of money, he had a lot of friends. But once he lost or wasted his substance, wasted in his inheritance, then he didn't have any friends left. And now he's friendless. 
and foodless, if you will. Hmm. He wanted to go home because of the benefits. The benefits of his father's house. He never expressed his love for his father in his, in his conversation or in what he said. He never expressed his love for his father or said that he missed his father's presence or said that he missed his father's love. He never said that. The text doesn't say that. Now, some people may, may say something, and write, may read something else in there, but I'm talking about what the text says. This is so important, saints. Let me say this again because I want you to get it. He wanted to go home because of the benefits of his father's house. I can say that because the son never expressed his love for his father, said that he missed his father. He talked about what his father had in his house. Never said he missed his father's presence. Never said he missed his father's love. Why is this so important? This is so important because... God, our Father, our Heavenly Father, wants us to know that even when we have hidden motives, bad motives, and our intentions are not completely pure, He wants us to know that He still runs to us in our time of need. How do I know that? Where it's in the text. Let's look at verse 20. We'll read 19 to find out what the, other, the son continued to say. He said in verse 19, and I'm no worthy to be called thy son. I want to be a hired servant. That's, 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 the, that's, the, that's the mentality that the son had. But watch verse 20. And he arose and came to his father. But, you see that conjunction there? But, when he was yet a great way off, what did his father do? His father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Wow. Listen. God wants us to know that even when we have hidden motives, Hidden agendas, bad motives, and our intentions are not completely pure. He wants us to know he still runs to us in our time of need. That's what the father did. He ran to where the son was before he got home and hugged and kissed him, kissed his neck, fell on him and kissed his neck, fell on his neck and kissed him. You see it? Verse 20. Watch this. Listen carefully. The father showed and showered upon the young man or the young son his unmerited, his undeserved and unearned favor. That's what our heavenly father does for us. Oh, how unsearchable are the depths of our Heavenly Father's love and grace toward us. My brothers and my sisters, it is never, it will never, ever never, be so much about our love for God. It will always be about his love for us. I believe I got some scripture to back it up. 
Let's go back to 1 John chapter 4. We're going to go to verse 10. Listen what John records. Here is, herein is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sin. Wow. Again, I must say, it will never, ever, never be about our love for God. It will always be about his love for us. The hero in this parable is the father. It is about the father's perfect love for his imperfect son. This parable that Jesus gave, this story that Jesus told, it is about how much God loves us. About a holy God who loves unperfect children. So what do we need to do as we journey from earth to heaven? is to make sure that we are accepting his love for us and understanding. It's so important that we accept his love by understanding his perfect love and also understand that your past doesn't matter when it comes down to whether God loves you or not. He loves you in spite of you. And thirdly, we must remember that God loves you in spite of your hidden agenda, your wrong motives, or your bad motives. He still loves you and I. Isn't that good news? So I want to encourage us and perhaps even challenge us. If you have not been doing it, begin to accept his love for you. Receive it. Receive it in your heart. Receive it in your life. Because he has declared in his word that he will never ever leave or forsake us. I don't know how you feel about it, but I have accepted his love for me. And I know he loves me. And John says, it is not so much that we loved him, but because he loved us. And now because he loved me, I can love him back. Mm -hmm. I will love him back. But I love him back. Because now, because I understand his love for me and I have his love in my heart, that I can love him back because I understand that he loved me first. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you now for this preaching and teaching moment. We pray now, God, that you allow this word tonight to sink deeply into our hearts, our minds, and our spirits. That we will become better, better Christians, better disciples, better ambassadors of yours as we carry out the assignments that you have given us individually and collectively. We pray, God, that this word tonight will bring a fresh revelation to us as we understand our Heavenly Father's love. We thank you for allowing us to come together on tonight, and we pray for those who may be suffering with a malady, a sickness, or disease, or may be confused, or may be in pain, having problems, facing calamities and conflicts. We pray that uh, they will look to the heels which come with their help and we intercede on their behalf because we know uh, that, the, that you are still the answer for the world today and that the, the strong are supposed to bear the infirmities of the weak. So we intercede on behalf of those who may 
be in darkness and need to come to the light. And we pray for those who may have backslid and walked away from your presence, Lord. We pray that they will come back to a God who loves them in spite of them. And we pray for those who may not have ever received the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, as their personal Savior. We pray that they will make a decision on tonight to receive the Savior of the world in the person of Jesus the Christ, the Anointed One. We thank you now for allowing us this privilege and this opportunity. And we continue to pray that you will continue to use us to make a difference in our communities, make a difference in our surroundings. And we pay, pray a special prayer for the unsaved. If you're unsaved on tonight and you're listening to tonight, tonight, we pray a special prayer for you. And you can pray with me or repeat after me. Lord God, I'm a sinner. I need to be saved. I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. He died for my sins and you raised him for my redemption. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and make me a new creature, a new creation. I receive you. I accept you as Lord and Savior of my life. If you prayed that prayer tonight, according to the word of God, you are saved. And what I want you to do, now you have made that declaration, you made that profession, you made that confession. I want you, I want to encourage you to connect with a Bible teaching, Bible believing church. So you can grow in what you have just confessed or what you have just believed. And if you need our church, please call us. That's Innovation Baptist Church. You can call us at 850-575-0818. Uh, you can log on to our website, innovationbaptistchurch.org, and someone will help you with your next steps. There are some more steps if you want to receive the abundance of the blessings of God. Well, thank you, my brothers and sisters, for joining us on tonight. Uh, if you need a replay for, of this message, you can log on to our website, innovationbaptistchurch.org, and you can get the replay, and you can even share it with someone else who perhaps do not understand or who have never really accepted our Heavenly Father's perfect love for us. Until Sunday morning at 9.45 a.m. hour, we'll see you then. You can visit us on Facebook Live or you can visit us at the Sanctuary 2150 Bellevue Way in the capital city of Florida, Tallahassee, Florida, 9.45 a.m. Until then, stay safe, stay strong, and be blessed is our prayer.